What's up guys, I'm Dimitri with Hyra Canucks and this is Anthony from Tweak Town. We're here at GDC in San Jose. Uh, an awesome show, we got to see some really cool stuff, but uh, there was one major announcement that everybody was so excited to hear and that is Pascal. Me and Anthony are here going to talk to you about that everything you need to know about the future of Pascal or the, the, the current progress on the future of NVIDIA's next-gen architecture. So the P100, the NVIDIA P100, stands for Pascal. Pascal, yes. What do you think about it? Uh, a lot of tech crammed into it. 16 nm FinFET process from TSMC, Pascal architecture itself, and HBM2. And HBM2 was a, a huge increase over HBM1, which was on AMD's Radeon Arnon Fury X, and a huge increase on the GDDR5 on every card that we've seen until now, like yeah. Titan X. 980 Ti, 390X and everything before it. Big challenge for NVIDIA, big challenge for TSMC. I think it's been five years. Five years is, is a long time. I think it's the longest time between node shifts. We went from 40 to 28, a yep. lot quicker. Yeah. Um, but and this that... is a huge GPU, it's a huge part. It's a lot of work. It's probably more work than they've ever had to do before. That's why it's taken so long. And this is something that we've been talking to, to, to Anthony about of potentially why they skipped the 800 series for the desktop graphics cards, because they knew that Pascal was coming. They knew that this is going to be a huge thing for NVIDIA, a huge thing for, for graphics, discrete graphics. So, you know, we had 700, skipped 800. There was some stuff on the mobile, but then we went to 900 series. And now the next thing is going to be, any speculation on the name? Uh, GeForce 10K. I really like 10K, even though it's, you're going from 980, you can't really go to 1080 as we've been talking it's going to be geforce gtx 1080 is going to sound like 1080p it'll sound weak 10k sounds pretty powerful but what do you guys think leave your thoughts in the comments below about what would the nvidia's pascal next generation graphics lineup will be called but so 16 nm really impressive stuff hbm2 that stuff is like that's that's next gen right there so GDDR5 on the 980 Ti and Titan X is about 330 gigabytes a second, which is quite fast. Uh, the HBM1 on the Fury X is 512 gigabytes a second. HBM2 has a theoretical max of 1024 gigabytes a second, which is a terabyte per second, three times faster than Titan X. But the Fury X had 512 and it didn't do that much more, it didn't provide a huge increase, but it was limited to four gigabytes. So HBM1 yeah. is limited to four gigabytes only maximum, where well, HBM2 can go up to, I think, 32 gigabytes. So we won't see that on a GeForce card. No. We'll see eight and maybe 16 on a GeForce card, which is still insane. But having 32 gig of crazy fast next-gen RAM is still yeah. mind-blowing. So not only are we jumping the leap and the, the memory tech, because it's 3D stacked and everything, but you're jumping in, there's just massive capacity too. Well, I guess it would be interesting to see what benefits we gain for gamers, but VR, man. Yes. VR. On the gaming side, you don't mind that. And we've never had a trinity of upgrades. We've mm -hmm. never had a node change to 16NM and HBM2 and an architectural change. It's normally one, you know, a year later, another. Yeah. Year later, another. So HBM2 is gonna it's gonna deliver more benefits than what we think. And just from the transistors point of view, so the 980 Ti has seven or eight billion. Uh, eight billion. Eight billion. And then the the P100 the GPU alone, without the HBM, is 15. 15. And then card with HBM is 150 billion transistors. So 20x. You're going from eight billion to 15 billion on the GP100, yep. and that's mainly thanks to them being able to shrink the chip down and then add even more transistors to it. So it doesn't sound impressive just going up by 100% from 8 billion to 15, but you gotta remember they're doing it on something that's radically smaller. So if they were doing it on the same size, you probably would see 25, 30 billion, right. something yep. like that. But then getting something 
that, that is smaller and cramming twice as many transistors onto it is, that's as a, as a tech enthusiast, I nerded out at that, <laughs> completely nerded out. <laughs> but VR will be a big part of Pascal. And NVIDIA, yep. they haven't talked too much about their push in VR, but it's going to be insane this year. The demos that they're showing now versus what we've seen at CES and Computex in the past, it's so fantastic to be able to experience those demos because you see the advancement in the, the textures, high resolution, everything. Um, well, not only the graphics side of things, but the latency side of things, the frame rate side of things right now, right? The VR ready PC uh, sticker indicates 90, 90p, 90 frames per second. Which is awesome. It's way better than 30 FPS that you have on consoles and the 60 FPS average that you get on PC gaming these days. It's a, it's a big leap and the new headsets are much better. The final versions of the Rift are awesome. The final version of the Vive is even better. And then NVIDIA are showing off light field headsets here at GTC yep. as well, which is a whole new way of actually rendering the pixels to the headset to your eyes, which you need to see. If you need to see VR to be able to understand it, you need to see light field to be able to understand that. And yeah. it's like another iteration. It's just, you think that you've seen everything at CS, which was only three months ago, and then you come here and it's like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah. There's been this new advancement. This new advancement, yeah. You can't keep up. We're here every, every event and we can't keep up. So what can we expect for the consumer side of Pascal? Uh, first of all, um, Jensen announced that the Tesla P100 is available for production today, which means that the enterprise level, so of course, will be the first to cover that area. But the consumer side, hopefully we'll get that. Do you think we'll get the Pascal card in this year? I think we'll see Pascal before Copytex, which is the end of May. So only end of May. two and a half months. Wow. And I think the performance will be huge. I think maybe GTX 980 Ti, if we're aiming at that type of card, probably 1.5x performance. So another 50% on top from a single card. So 1.5x performance from a 980 Ti. Yes, on a single card that uses less power, that runs cooler, and that's a lot smaller. So we should go from a 980 Ti being, you know, X big to a much smaller card, maybe two thirds the size, kind of like an R9 Fury X. And just to give you a little wrap up of what it's like to be actually in the show GDC. So it's a bunch of seminars where you have developers, analysts, and you know, some little press like us to, to see all this stuff and deliver this information to you. But uh, going to these seminars can be extremely intimidating because it's just pew, information over the head where if you're not in the devel developing field, it's a little bit out of uh, our league, but so much crazy and incredibly expensive server racks, hardware everywhere on the show floor. What's your favorite part about GDC, man? Just the hardware. Just seeing so many graphics cards. I love graphics cards and walking past racks and racks. Like we walk past these servers with yep. like 16 graphics cards in them with two GPUs per graphics card. So 32, gig of, uh, 32 GPUs in a single system. But it's can just, it run Crisis, you know? No, it can't run Crisis. No, no not at all. Not no. at all. But that is probably the only show where we go around and see eight 980 Ti's stacked on, in one case. And then you uh, get a totally new sense of what it's like to, to see that type of hardware and experience it. And one interesting part about uh, one PC that we saw, it had eight 980 Ti's and it had three power supplies that were both, what, 12, over a thousand watts? Uh, all three were 1600 watts, 1600 with one of them watts. being a redundant power redundant supply. Power supply. Yeah. But then you realize uh, the, the, the actual power supply, that 1600 watts was a very thin tube. Yeah. And then obviously it's a lot more expensive than the consumer side, but you know, that's so cool that we never see these things on the consumer side of things, which is understandably so, but it's so cool to be able to see that at 1600 watts, like, I think you're even understating. This was thin and it was, it, you saw it and, you, and I think I, I asked twice, this is 1600 watts, yep. this is 1600 watts. Just, it was just incredibly small, like, it was loud. I think they were worth a thousand dollars each yep. just for one 1600 watt power supply. And you got three of those and eight GTX 980 Ti's. But uh, that would be our little conversation on Pascal, what happened at GDC. A um, little expectation and forecast on when we could potentially expect a consumer Pascal card from NVIDIA. Super excited to see when that comes out to market. Anthony, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you, man. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure to follow us on all social media. 
for you know our continuous update on uh, Pascal. But guys, I'm Dimitri with Howard Canucks. This is Anthony with Tweak Town. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. If yeah, if we maintain like this very intimate <laughs> closeness, like <laughs> we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, what is it? The deleted scenes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, of course. I'll remember that for a long time. <laughs>